Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, I'll talk you through how I designed the neck for my Brian May Red Special guitar build using a CAD software utility. I'll begin by explaining how I worked up the overall design sketches using known measurements and design details, including the assumptions I made. Then I'll move on to cover the detail on the headstock, the main section, and the tenon separately. I've illustrated this video with TurboCAD screen recordings and animated renders of the 3D objects. I created my interpretation of Brian May's Red Special by studying photographs in the public domain and the X-ray images taken in 2003 at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London. I used known measurements of commercial replicas and made some reasonable assumptions and judgments to fill in any gaps. I've collated known information about the Red Special and its commercial replicas, the Super and the Special, made by Brian May Guitars, on my website, dsgb.net. Links to all references mentioned in this video are in the description below. Throughout the video, I will alternate between imperial and metric units for simplicity's sake, but please note that the Red Special would have been designed in the imperial system of weights and measures, as would have been the convention in 1960s Britain. I worked in the metric equivalents of imperial dimensions in TurboCAD, and I used a lookup table in Microsoft Excel to convert between the two. First, let's examine my overall design sketches. It's good practice to create accurate design sketches, whether you're making a guitar neck using manual techniques, including hand-operated power tools, or by CNC as I did. If you're working primarily by hand, these will become your working drawings and underpin the design of any jigs and templates you require, including profile gauges. Brian and Harold May created their working drawings on sheets of full scap paper taped together using traditional drafting methods and implements of the mid-20th century, including pencils, rulers, compasses, and French curves. I've illustrated this process in another YouTube video entitled How Brian May Designed His Red Special Guitar. This video also explores an urban myth that Brian and Harold drew around various common household objects to form the outline of the guitar. I'm not sure that this is true, but it does illustrate that common objects conform to straightforward imperial dimensions. The overall length of the Red Special neck is nominally two and a half feet, that's 30 inches long, with six inches being located within the guitar body in a mortise and tenon joint arrangement, and two feet out of the body, including the main section and headstock. As I've drawn it here, it is one sixteenth inch shorter than two and a half feet, because there's a small gap between the end of the tenon and the back of the mortise, and that's visible in photographs of the Red Special, with the pick guard removed and while the neck is still in place. The width at the nut is 1 and 13 sixteenths inches, that's 46 millimetres, and that increases to 2 inches or 51 millimetres at the 12th fret, which extrapolates to 2 and 1 eighths inch at the end of the tenon. My design process started when I realised how the Red Special headstock was constructed. As I illustrate this, you'll appreciate, as I did, how this elegant general principle can be applied to construct the rest of the guitar. Taking my y-axis reference as the zero fret, I'll start by placing a 3 inch diameter circle at a locus of 3 inches forward of the zero fret. Next, I'll stack a 2 inch diameter circle on top of that, with its centre at 5.5 inches forward of the zero fret. A 1 inch diameter circle placed at the 7 inch position sets the overall length of the headstock. I'm sure you can see that these three circles arranged in this way doesn't correctly define the headstock tip. For this, we need to add a one and a half inch diameter circle thus, which sets the reference points for the two three and five eighth inch long line segments, which form the sides. Next, I'll place the Bakelite string guide just under a quarter inch forward of the zero fret, assuming that it's one eighth of an inch thick, because this is the typical thickness of Bakelite sheet. Then we need to select a circle of suitable diameter to form the arcs of the return angles. One and a quarter inch looks reasonable here. Then I'll add one inch long line segments. Finally, I'll join the two arcs with line segments approximately 5 eighths inch long to complete the picture. The headstock thickness of 19 over 32 inch, that's 15 millimetres, allows a better fit for tuning machine heads than 5 eighths inch, which is nearer 16 millimetres. The tuner hole spacing is just as logical. The outer string tuners are placed two inch apart at the Y locus of the three inch circle. The next sets are placed at one and a half inch spacings, so four and a half inch and six inch forward of the zero fret, respectively. Cleaning up the construction elements of the headstock to leave the basic outline and orienting it into landscape format, 
we can move forward to position the end of the tenon, 29 and 15 16 inch from the headstock tip, and join it up to form the whole outline of the neck in plan view. The fret positions can all easily be calculated for a 24 inch scale, so I'll just paste all these directly on without any further discussion. The fret markers are a quarter inch diameter, except those at the 24th fret, which need to be smaller to fit within the frets, so 6mm works here. The outer fret markers appear to be about half an inch from the centre line, except at the 19th fret, which look wider spaced, perhaps 9 of a 16th inch, or 19 of a 32 inch. The fretboard heel is constructed from a 6 inch diameter circle, and its end is half an inch from the front edge of the 24th fret. Finally, adding the pickup rebates in the tenon section, these need to be 1 and 1 16th inch wide to accommodate Brian's original homemade pickups. Check out my video on these. I'll discuss the depths in the third section of this video, when I illustrate how to work up the 3D CAD objects from these design sketches. I estimate that the neck tenon mounting screws are a number 12 by 1 and 3 8 inch long slotted wood screw. The nearest metric equivalent is M5.5 by 35mm long. These appear to be spaced 1 and 1 8 inch apart, with each screw centre at half inch from the edge. Check out the truss rod adjuster bolt cover plate shape. I think it follows a mathematical relationship. In this section, I'll talk through the key points of the neck design sketch side elevation view, but I won't construct it from first principles as I have done previously. Starting with the headstock and working backwards to the body then, the first question that arises is what is the angle between the headstock and the main section? I initially assumed that this was 4 degrees, but reviewing my 2004 Burns Special guitar, I found that the angle was 7 degrees against the horizontal main section. It seems to be generally accepted that the original Red Special neck pitch is 2 degrees, so this would leave us with a 5 degree angle to the headstock. I don't have any authoritative information here, so these seem like reasonable inferences. I'll discuss how I perceive and construct the volute in the third part of the video, so we'll park that for now. The truss rod adjuster bolt rebate looks elliptical in plan view, so I've assumed that that was carved to be approximately elliptical, 9 sixteenths of an inch wide and 1 and 1 quarter inch long. Everyone is aware that the red special neck is very thick, but it is difficult to tie this down to actual numbers. Thankfully, Brian May guitars quote a thickness of 1 and 3 64th inch at 26.5 mm at the second fret, and 1 and 11 64th inch at 29.8 mm at the 14th fret for the Red Special Super. In my experience, based on the various Red Special replicas I have owned and inspected, and the statement that the Super conforms to the original's dimensions and technical appointments in almost every regard, I think that Brian's intention was to make the neck 1 and 1 16th inch, or about 27mm thick, including the fretboard, at the nut, and 1 and 3 16th inch, or about 30mm thick, around the 12th fret. Assuming that the fretboard is 5 16th inch, or about 8mm thick, this leaves the mahogany as 3 quarters of an inch thick around the headstock and 7 eighths of an inch thick at the scale halfway point, and these seem like straightforward numbers he would have aimed for. Moving on now to the section of the neck at the body joint, you can see in the revealing close-up footage of the Red Special in the Premier Guitars Rig Rundown video that the depth has been made up by gluing a separate piece of wood in place. This appears to be between 7 over 32 inch and 1 quarter inch, which would indicate that the piece of mahogany that Brian carved the neck from was between 1 and 1 eighth inch and 1 and 1 quarter inch, that's 29 to 32 millimetres thick. Sticking with the ellipses and circles theory, I've used an ellipse to join up the neck heel here. The tenon section is relatively straightforward to construct in elevation as in plan, because the body layers are 3 quarters of an inch thick, so the tenon must also be 3 quarters of an inch thick. The piece of binding that sits under the heel is 5 over 32 inch, or around 4 millimetres thick, so the lower part of the tenon only has to take up 19 over 32 inch, as I've illustrated. The tenon itself is nominally 6 inches long, and the section between the end of the fretboard and the end of the tenon itself is nominally 4 inches long. In this final section of the video, I'll demonstrate how I form the 3D CAD objects which constitute each part of the neck. I have chosen to construct the neck this way to suit the available functionality of TurboCAD 2016 and my relatively limited self-taught CAD skills. So if my strategy looks unusually clunky to a professionally trained and experienced designer, those are the reasons why. 
starting once again at the headstock, then working down the neck towards the body, creating the basic shape is obviously relatively straightforward. But there is some complexity in how it blends into the semi-elliptical cross-section at the forward end of the main section, and how that happens is a matter of judgement. To set up the constraints and construction elements, I've introduced the 2D cross-section, more about those soon, and angled it at 5 degrees. Next, I stacked six headstock 2D shapes at regular vertical intervals to form the overall thickness of 19 over 32 inches, or 15 millimetres. Finally, I manipulated the nodes of these Bézier curves so they snap onto the semi-ellipse, which is also a Bézier curve, in each XY plane. The final action is to form the solid 3D object by connecting consecutive 2D profiles. This is referred to as lofting in TurboCAD. I don't know what this process is called in industry standard CAD software utilities such as AutoCAD or SolidWorks. This algorithm can return unusual results, especially if there are asymmetries in one or more of the 2D profiles, or overlapping nodes which demand an implausible output. Setting up a successful and satisfactory lofting operation in TurboCAD requires attention to detail, and can be frustrating. Turning to the enigmatic volute, or bump, which blends the main section into the headstock and adds extra depth under the truss rod adjuster bolt rebate, I first sketched the outline in plan to set the overall size and form. I based it on a circle which could be one inch in diameter, but I've made it slightly smaller to form a widened parabola. The volute appears to extend about one and one eighth inch forward of the return curve. I constructed the volute in three sections. The rear and middle by lofting between two bezier curves, which blend smoothly to the underside of the headstock at the sides. The tip is circular and created by sweeping a 2D profile around 180 degrees. Again, the outer edge blends smoothly to the flat surface. I've had three attempts at designing this feature over the years I've been refining my Red Special CAD design, and this is the closest representation to what I observe that I can achieve with the skills and software I have. Moving on to constructing the main section of the Red Special neck, a considerable amount of judgement is required here, because there aren't any high-resolution, detailed photographs of the underside of the Red Special neck, to the best of my knowledge. My strategy was to start with the semi-elliptical profiles, and evolve these into successively flatter cross-sections, constructed from three circles, to achieve a smooth blend into the rectangular heel section. I'll show you three of these, at the 2nd, 12th, and 17th frets. The width and depth measurements at any given point are set by the design sketch, and as you construct these cross-sections, it becomes evident that there is a natural transition point where the profiles can be derived from a single ellipse to those which require two offset circles with a third larger circle to fill the gap at the apex. In my design, the 8th fret was a pure ellipse, and the 12th fret two circles, so the transition point must be somewhere in that range. I created eight unique profiles, not including the rectangular section at the body join, to try to ensure a satisfactory lofting operation. Some trial and error is required to second guess what the interpolation algorithm prefers. Too few and the loft is likely to be irregular, and too many and it could fail, or return an unusual result. I found that two individual lofts which separate the steeply curved body end from the more uniform middle section works well. Finishing off with the tenon, there isn't much left to cover. I just want to emphasise that the tenon is a dovetail joint, and that these are trapezoidal, i.e. the sides are not parallel. The rebate depths appear to be quite shallow, in order to set the correct staggered heights for Brian's original homemade pickups. I estimate that these are no more than 1 16th inch and 1 8th inch deep. To create the solid object, I duplicated the 2D closed polygon and placed them both 53mm apart. I then rotated them 0.38 degrees in the z-plane, and then lofted between them. Finally, I filleted the side edge of the heel by a small 132 inch radius to encourage the lofting algorithm to achieve a smooth blend from the final curved profile into the rectangular end of the main section of the neck. Well that's all for me for this video, so thanks very much for watching. I hope I've given you some insights into the elegant design underpinning this iconic and unique guitar. Please check out my other YouTube videos and my website, dsgb.net, which cover a wide range of topics on Brian May's guitars and musical equipment.